him. Let's usher in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says he dwells in our praises. Praise Jesus. Before any song is sung this morning, let us tell him how we feel about him this morning. Lord, I love you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. And I worship you this morning, Lord God, not because I am necessarily good, Lord, but because you are a good God and you are worthy to be praised, Lord Jesus. This morning, I only see you this morning, Lord God, because I'm focusing on you this morning, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for bringing me through this week, Lord Jesus. So many things could have happened, Lord God. I could have gone where travelers go and no message to return. But Lord Jesus, oh, Father God, I thank you for the ways that you made this week, Lord God. You made a way out of no way for me, Lord Jesus. Oh, I thank you for the harm, for the danger that you've kept me from. I don't even know it, but I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 thank you Lord we are nearing the end of of, of the year and and we're still standing that's that's something to be to be thankful for amen you know yesterday yesterday I, I was watching where Nelson Mandela's body was taken back to his hometown and the people lined the street. And if you saw how they got excited when, he, when his body passed because he granted them freedom. He, the people out there who say they, wouldn't, they couldn't live in a certain section of the city if it wasn't for him. They were so grateful for the sacrifice that he, he did for them 27 years in prison, being labeled a terrorist and a troublemaker and can you imagine we are now here in the presence of the king of king jesus who went to calvary for us he went to hell for us literally he went and got the keys hallelujah hallelujah let's shout hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. So I, I just want to get excited for Jesus with the reality of, of what he did for us. We shouldn't have to make anybody pump us up and, and, and beg us to worship. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to see we are standing on holy ground. Hallelujah. Sister Karen, you know the verse. Start us off with that verse, a beautiful verse. As I walk through these doors... As I walk through the These doors, doors, I could feel his presence. I, I feel his, his presence. presence. And I knew it was the place. And, and I, I knew this was the place where love, where love abounds. abounds. For this step, oh, for this day, this is the temple, the temple. Jehovah, Jehovah God abides here, here, and we are standing, and we are standing in His presence. Sing that verse again, Sister Karen. That's how I felt this morning. 
let's just praise Jesus now.
just clap our hands to him this morning. Let's just lift a voice to him and shout hallelujah. 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 Come, let's magnify the Lord.
thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I love you so much. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear these praises. Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much.
us this worship a wonderful God to love a sinner such as I a wonderful is love like this we do not deserve to be here but his love his grace has brought us here this morning to give him thanks and praise in his house and I want to use that opportunity to say thank you Jesus for his goodness to us all we are going to approach the throne of grace this morning and, um, among us there are various needs per quest uh, sent here and they are taken care of many are due to surgery they are those who have lost loved ones they are those who are on the severe trials and many things we undergo every day but through it all we have learned to trust in Jesus we have learned to depend upon his word and we are here this morning to talk to him I'm going to ask all of us to to really link with someone this morning amen Bible said high and sharp met high and, and deep call it unto deep amen amen hallelujah and we are going to really unite together we're going to pray for each other hallelujah we are going to pray for this service today the greatest opportunity has presented itself today for those who have not known the Lord will come to know him and those of us who might be be drifting hallelujah will find strength to keep on forging on let's talk to him tonight today this morning Lord Jesus how great thou art how wonderful your love is towards us you are wonderful you're great you are marvelous you are magnificent you are compassionate we thank you for brought us here safe this morning we thank you for woke us up we thank you more than all for life for in the grave who shall give thee thanks and while we have our being we shall yet praise you hallelujah and so we thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. A wonderful is love like this, to love a sinner such as I, one who deserved to die, but your love brought salvation down to man. So we're here this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you have listened and you have read all the needs that are presented here this morning. I pray, Lord God, that you will respond in the appropriate manner. You will always respond individually, not as a group. You attend to us individually. And thank you for that, Lord. We pray for your divine intervention this morning in our service. And those in our viewers and our viewers of us on, on the internet. We pray that they will make contact on whatever means it is. We pray for them too, Lord, as they listen, as they watched. Oh God, your anointing will reach to their level. You will touch them, Jesus. Oh God, let this service be one that we'll never forget. But because today is a day of salvation, now is the acceptable time. Now is when we will say to you yes or no. And because you are so wonderful and you are so great, we say yes to you, Jesus. Let your will be done. That those will be undergoing surgery this week, I pray, Lord, that you will be with them. You will guide the hands of the doctors who are doing the surgical operation. Because your will will be done in many ways lord it is your will if it is your will that they should undergo that physical operation 
that you will be their guide in the process. And if it is not your will, God, then you will do it yourself, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, we thank you. I pray, God, for those who are here who have lost loved ones. Mother, father, sister, brother, whatever here of the family or friends they might be lost. I pray, God, that you'll bring that level of comfort to them. You'll bring that level of strength that they need. God, I pray that you will reach down to their level. Give them the strength, Lord, the understanding and the willpower to keep on going. Hallelujah. Realizing that we all will go one day. We all will meet our day one day, Lord. And I know, God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. But more than all, God, this service presents itself today as the best opportunity for man to be saved. Repent of their sins. Baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, you will gloriously fill them with the Holy Spirit. What a day to be alive. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. God, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. And God, we pray for this country. Yes, this country, Jamaica land we love. God, when we listen to our murder figure, when we listen to our rape, when we listen to our robbery, when we listen to the various crimes that are taking place, God, we realize that we are so vulnerable to these things. We realize that how slim a chance it is to live in this country, but we present it into your hand, God. We pray, God, you'll help us. Help our security minister. Help our those who are working in the field, God. And I pray for those people who are trying to do all the, the power to, to disrupt every day, the, the heart of the day. The Lord God at your spirit will arrest their spirit of, this, of disobedience and bring them under the authority of your will. God, we are depending on you. We are believing you. We are hoping in you because we can, we can believe in you. Let your will be done today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, we thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands and worship him and give him thanks. The hands in our prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your will. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to read from the word of the Lord today. I want to ask us to turn to the book of the Psalms, Psalm number five, Psalm number five, we're going to read responsibly this fifth psalm we're going to read from the King James Version today praise the Lord how many brought a Bible to church with you if you brought your Bible just lift it up Amen. praise the Lord Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Lord, 
But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. But let all those that their their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Praise the Lord. I'd just like to Lift for your consideration. Verse 7. David said. As for me. I will come into your house. And the only. The only way I can come. Is because of the multitude. Of thy mercy. Not just mercy. But the multitude. That's the only reason why I can even approach because of the multitude of thy mercy. And when I worship toward thy holy temple, see, he's looking from where he is. He's looking perhaps from his own house toward the temple or the tabernacle. And he's saying, when I worship, I do so with great reverence. I don't trifle with you. I know that you and I are not on the same level. I have a great respect and awe for you. And I don't want to ever treat our relationship in a way that is not worthy. Praise God. How many know today that you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the mercies of God? You just wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. Not, not just because... You need his strength and so on to be here. But you couldn't even, except for the blood, lift your hands and give him thanks. Praise God. Just move around and greet several persons very warmly. Amen. Make sure you greet them very warmly. If they are a guest of ours, if you don't know their name, if you've never seen them before, please smile with them and treat them very well. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Now, 
just before Sister Jody Ann Palmer comes to give us our official welcome and tell us what's on the agenda for the rest of today and the rest of the week and maybe a few weeks, we have a car key here. And uh, when Brother Barry brought it to me, I said, this looks like an expensive car. Maybe I should hold on to it. Amen. And any car that's left behind in the parking lot, I'll take it. But uh, if you've not been able to locate your car key, and if you can tell us at least what car it's for, we'll give it to you. If you can't tell us what car it's for, we'll keep it. If you don't know what car you drive, you're in a sad state. Amen. I want you to do something for me as Sister Jody comes. I want you to just look at one person. And I just, I don't want you to say anything to them. I just want you to smile with them. That's all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's not smiling, no. Let's not stop smiling, no. Amen. I'm going to invite our visitors to stand at this moment. Whether you're here with us for the first time, that's right, second or third time. Amen. Those who are nearby, please warmly welcome them. Don't sit as yet. We are very delighted that you have chosen to spend this morning with us and we hope that you will have an experience with the creator of all things amen if you feel a tug if you feel a pull at your heartstring do not ignore it just come on up and see what will happen all right god bless you you may be seated and here are the schedule of announcements for the period sunday december 15th This evening at 6.45 p.m., there will be evening service in the sanctuary. Monday the 16th at 4 p.m., there is junior choir practice. At 6 p.m., there is combined choir practice. On the 17th, there are no scheduled activities. Wednesday the 18th at 6.30 a.m. to 7.45 a.m., there is morning manna, and at 11.30 a.m., there's prayer and fasting service. Now Thursday, the 19th, the Golden Ages Luncheon at City View Hotel in Smoky Vale will commence and a bus will be leaving Pentab at 1.30 p.m. At 6 p.m., there will be ACA Social in the Ralph and Helen Reynolds Hall. Friday, the 20th, at 7 p.m., there will be a Teens Social and also at 7 p.m., there is Agape Ministry Banquet at the Hotel Four Seasons. The cost of $3,500 per person is now due, and interested persons must contact Sisters Keisha Williams, Bobbeth Berger, Raquel Henry, or Brother Orlando Garrick by today. Now the 22nd of December, at 6 a.m., there will be rightly dividing the word on RJR Fame FM. At 7 a.m., there is prayer time in the sanctuary. And at 8 a.m., there is pre-session. At 8.30 a.m., we have Sunday school. And at 10.15 a.m., there is worship service, children's church, and teen tab. At 6.30 p.m., we'll be having our Sunday school Christmas program under the theme... The word returned. Now to general announcements. All ministry leaders are being reminded that today, December 15th, is the deadline to submit annual reports to Sister Desiree Markey. Donations of new and used toys in good condition are being collected for wards at the children's home. These should be given to Brother Dean and Sister Renee Taylor today. Pentab's multimedia team is offering to take family pictures at $300 each 
between the hours of 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday, December 22nd. Now in our daily Bible reading, today we are at Deuteronomy 13, and Sunday the 22nd, we should be at Deuteronomy 20. Please have a wonderful time in the Lord today, and God bless you. It's a family affair, Christmas program this year, under the theme, Come, hear the children sing, play, and recite poetry to glorify the King. Come in your colors, red and green. If you don't have those colors, just wear what you have. From 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., we'll be having our family picture. Come with your family, grandma, grandpa, uncle, brother. Take your picture for only 300 Jamaican dollars. Also, food will be on sale after the service. It's a family affair, Christmas program this year. Be, be there. there. All right, did you hear what colors you are to wear? Huh? Sister, Sister Marcia, just stand up. Sister Marcia Williams, stand up. Amen. What color is that? Huh? That's red. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister McLean, stand up. See that color there? What color is that? So they're saying that on Sunday evening we should be dressed like that. So Brother Alan, that shirt is good enough, I think. Sister Katie on that top there. Uh, Sister, Sister Mackenzie, that hat. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to figure out what I can wear. I hope when I come, you won't think that you won't put me to any party, any particular party when I come. Praise the Lord. Let's stand. Uh, folks, remember we did make mention last Sunday that we would ask for you to bring next Sunday a very special offering. Remember that? You didn't remember? You didn't remember? You were here last week? Weren't here last week? All right. For those who weren't here last week, we did mention that at our upcoming uh, national conference, the national board has decided to uh, honor some of our minute pastors who have been serving for a good many years. And uh, I, I believe that's a very commendable thing. And I, I believe that we have several ministers who have served, served the Lord faithfully. And uh, I believe that this is a wonderful thing that the National Board has decided to do. And they have written to the different assemblies asking for a contribution. And uh, I, I, I really would like for us to support this with everything that we have. And so next week, Sunday morning, I'm really going to ask you to come prepared to give. And brethren, I, I do know that times are tough. I know that. I know that. Amen? I know that. I, I don't just know it intellectually. I know it experientially. <laughs> but it's something that I believe we need to do. And uh, we'd like also just to see if, you know, we can help the elderly members of our community with just some food items. I think that would be a good thing to do. So uh, I'm, I'm just asking you to come. Maybe, 
maybe if you know you could bring something along with your offering you could bring maybe some like soap or toothpaste a toothbrush a wash rag you know something like that we would appreciate it amen everybody Amen. But today we're going to give our tithes and our offerings. And so I'm going to ask our ushers to come. We want to just honor the Lord in our giving. And uh, you know, I, I just believe that the Lord wants all his people to uh, be whole. And to serve him in a very mature and detailed way. And one of the things we need to do, brethren, as Christians, is try to look at the areas in which we are weak and, and work consistently on them. Amen? Amen, brethren? Amen. Amen. So if you are strong in worship and you love to worship and you give in worship but you're not faithful in your financial giving, then you have an area to work on. Is that right? Huh? You just can't leave that alone and think that, you know, we're all going to heaven. You must not think that. And if you are faithful in your financial giving, but you are very judgmental and critical of others, there, there are areas of your life you need to work on. Is that right? Would you agree with that, brethren? We agree with that. So, so there, there's always room for improvement in our lives. Is that true? Is that true in your life? Have you reached a place where there is no room for any improvement at all? Huh? Well, if you are like that, you need to start your own church. As a matter of fact, you need to just ask the Lord to take you. Because you don't belong down here. Amen. Amen. But we need to be faithful, brethren. And as I always say, the Lord is more interested in how we give than in what we give. He's, he's looking for the sacrificial giver, the one who gives beyond their power and who does so just out of a heart of love, not counting the cost, just loving God. Praise the Lord. Would you bow your heads? Lord Jesus, we have come today into your house, and we have come in the multitude of your mercy. We're very conscious that had it not been for Calvary, we wouldn't be able to open our mouths. Sometimes we boast and make statements that are hard and we don't take into consideration that we're not the ones who are in control. Please help us, Lord. Please help us. We're prone to pride and arrogance. We're prone to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. We're prone to have a selfish preoccupation with our own way, and sometimes we don't look on the things of others. We just look on our own things. Help us, Lord. Forgive us. Wash us one more time in your blood. We need an inner cleansing today. We want to be perfectly whole. We stand ready to give, Lord. Your word has instructed us to give. We are not the ones who have come up with this idea. 
you are the one who has instructed us to give. And you have instructed us to give cheerfully. And we always bear in mind the account of how you stood over against the treasury, beholding how the people gave. And when you made an assessment of that widow, your assessment was that Though in the eyes of men she had given very little, in your eyes she had done so well, and they who had given so much had not done so well, because you said this lady had given all her living, and perhaps when she gave, she did not know what she would eat when she went home. Thank you, Lord, for showing us that you don't look at people the way we do. And there are people in the room today who would love to give. They would love to give. And they are very sorry today that they don't have anything to give. I know that you understand and that you will bless them. And when they do have something to give, they always give. Bless your people now, Lord, and help us to be faithful. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. us to lead us in worship today as we magnify the name of the Lord. The splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice.
things I'm learning, really learning. I was walking and saw a car parked and there was a bumper sticker on the car that said, there is only one God. Stop fighting for his position. One of the things I'm learning is that there is, and I'm, I really mean it, I'm learning that there is one God and I am not that one God. You know, that it seems very obvious. But just check on how you live your life and see whether in your life God is God or you are God. Just before the choir sings, there will not be a large supper service tonight, brethren. We're having one uh, early in January, so we're not having one tonight. We will be having communion, though, of a different kind. So just come and let's see what the Lord will do. Amen. I believe that the Lord is going to speak to us tonight in a very special way. So let's come and worship. We're running out of Sunday nights. Well... Just one more after this, eh? Just one more Sunday night after this. Just one more. One more. There's another Sunday morning service, but not a night service.
So just one more after this. Praise the Lord. The choir is ministering. You may be seated.
being asked to meet with Sister Taylor right after service uh, over by the high school. We used to say under the almond tree, but under the shed. Let me withdraw that statement. Under the piazza. Amen. Where the almond tree used to be. Then we want to recognize the presence of Sister Ivy Denton, the mother of Sister Lesma Levy. Uh, she's here. Of course, she resides in Florida. Amen. Mother Denton, where are you? Oh, there you are. All right. Amen. Just wave your hands. Wonderful. Let's clap our hands and 
welcome her. Then I saw my very good friend, Sister Monica Mackenzie. Amen. Just worshiping the Lord. And I remembered when Sister Mackenzie used to minister on the choir. Amen. Sister Monica, it's so hard to see you. Where are you? Hard to see you. Just look where Brother George is. Amen. It's difficult to Sister Monica, just wave your hand. We can see you. There you go. Let's clap our hands for her. <laughs> Wonderful. Amen. We're always delighted when our former members come back. And you don't have to continue to be a former member. Amen. We will have mercy and take back all those who have been deported. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And so the seal has two inscriptions, well, one inscription written on it with two aspects. The first is, the Lord knoweth them that are his. The second, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Praise the Lord. Or subject today is I'm in a great house but what kind of vessel am I? I'm in a great house but what kind of vessel am I? Lord you know us you know our going out and our coming in. You are acquainted with all our ways. Before we think a thought, you know it. So there is no creature that is not manifest in your sight. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. 
please have mercy upon us, Lord, and have mercy upon your people now. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated, please. When Paul wrote his second letter to Timothy, a part of which we have just read, his situation was drastically altered from what it had been when he wrote his first letter to Timothy. When he wrote his first letter to Timothy, he was a prisoner in Rome. But now, as he writes his second lesson, he's not only a prisoner in Rome, but he is facing imminent death. He is probably already tried and sentenced, but awaiting the day of his execution. Now, for one reason or another, almost all of Paul's associates in the ministry were gone. Some had just left him, backslidden, not necessarily from the faith, but backslidden from Paul. Some he had sent to different places, and now only Luke was with him. So for him, it was a very dark and a very lonely hour indeed. And... Uh, It might be that before the church is raptured, a few of us or many of us may have to deal with these circumstances. He wrote in chapter 4 and verse 16, he said, at my first answer or the first time I had to defend myself, probably before the emperor. He said, no man stood with me. No man stood with me. No man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding the Lord, took his place beside me. He didn't forsake me. He didn't forsake me. If you look at chapter 1, and I'm just trying to set the tone for Paul's circumstance. Uh, he says in chapter 1, verse 15, he says, This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. All those. All those which are in Asia are turned away from me. Of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. But the Lord never leaves us completely bereft. He says, the Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. So Onesiphorus uh, came to Rome from Ephesus and uh, 
sought Paul out at a time when it was very dangerous to be associated with Paul. Very dangerous. Have you thought about that, brethren? Have you thought about that, that there may come a time when to identify with certain people may be very dangerous to your health? Have you thought about that? What would you do if it comes to that? Says the Lord, grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. So Paul is alone. But very remarkably, his concern was not so much for himself. His concern was for Timothy and the success of the gospel ministry. Just as he did in his first epistle, he writes this second epistle to encourage Timothy to be faithful. Based on what we read in these two epistles, it appears as though Timothy was somewhat timid and lacking in moral courage. Was a very good teacher, had a wonderful heart for the Lord and for people, but he didn't seem to have a strong endurance, a strong tolerance for distressing situations. So, you know, Paul wrote to him in sharp tones and he said, endure hardness as a good soldier. He says, look, Timothy, the whole church is going through pressure. Guard up your lines, man, and don't be a sissy. That's really what he was saying. Timothy also suffered, it seems, from many ailments. You remember Paul wrote to him and he said, drink no longer water, but take a little wine for your stomach's sake and your often infirmities. Your often infirmities. He was also seemed to be somebody who would allow people to take advantage of him. You know, he was a soft type of person, and so you could take advantage of him. And Paul is saying, don't allow people to... He said, let no man despise thy youth. You know, don't allow people to do that to you. you know, Paul had sent Tychicus to Ephesus to replace Timothy so that Timothy might join him in Rome. He knew, Paul knew that God would soon remove him from the scene. He knew that. And so Timothy was the man he had chosen to replace him. And so he, now in light of his soon departure, he wants to pour himself into Timothy and try to, in as little time as possible, Tell him everything he could. So Paul says, he said to him, do thy diligence. Come before winter. Come before, I need to see you quickly. And he, he gives, he tells us, Paul, Paul tells us of his distress without telling us. You know, he, he never was one to complain, but he, we can see that he was in distress. He tells Timothy, the cloak that I left, bring it with you. That he's telling us I'm cold here in prison. It's, it's difficult to survive in the nights, especially since winter is coming. And so, Timothy is to come. So now in verse 15, Paul says to Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. truth. So Timothy is being urged by Paul to give diligence to the discharge of his ministerial duties. Paul is saying, I want you to discharge the duties of your ministerial office in such a manner as to meet with God's approval. 
So the aim of the Christian minister must not be to please men, but to please God. He's saying, Timothy, I want you to exercise your ministry, both in terms of your teaching and preaching, but more importantly, the way you live your life. I want you to order your ministry so that you will please the one who called you into the ministry. So he says, study. Now that word study, the Greek word translated study has nothing to do with books and with teachers. Sometimes we think that Paul was saying, I want you to take up the Holy Scriptures and study them. He, the word study there has nothing to do with that. It means be diligent, be zealous. Paul was saying to Timothy, do your best, make haste, give diligence, be eager to show yourself approved to God. I want you in your ministry to give a lot of diligence. I want you to be eager to please God. An approved workman is one who has been put to the test. And after meeting the specifications of the test, has won the approval of the one who subjected him to the test. Timothy is to do his best to present himself to God approved. Paul says, I don't want when God inspects your work for him to be ashamed. Rightly dividing, those words mean cut straight. It, it, it can be applied to many things. It could be applied, the seamstress, to sew a straight uh, path in the material. Or the plowman to make sure that when he's plowing, his path is straight. Rightly dividing the word. Remember I said last week, be careful how we add to the word. Or, or to subtract from the word, to, 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 to take away or to, to, to say more than God said. So Paul is saying, rightly divide the word. Don't add to it. Don't diminish it. Don't handle it deceitfully to support your particular conviction. Can somebody say amen? amen. But treat it honestly. And fully in a straightforward manner. And if God grants you more light, adjust. Make the adjustment. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Brethren, if any one of us pleases God, if we please God, it will be the result of a deliberate intention on our part. Nobody pleases God consistently by accident. Nobody does that. Now, since it is God who will examine what kind of workers we have been, then we should build our lives on his word and build his word into our lives. Amen. Verse 16, Paul says to Timothy, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So Paul exhorts Timothy to avoid godless chatter. For godless chatter has a tendency to lead people into more ungodliness. Greek word translated godless refers either to a thing or a person that has no relationship or connection with God whatsoever. The verb form of the word godless refers to the act of taking something that is dedicated to God and making it unacceptable to God. Godless chatter may also be expressed as worthless or silly discussions that show no reverence for God. Now in verse 17 and 18, Paul advises Timothy of the result 
of engaging in profane and vain babblings. Regarding those who did so, he said, their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Listen to how the New Living Translation renders the verse. It says, this kind of talk, this godless chatter, this idle, profane talk spreads like cancer. That's the case of Hymenius and Philetus. Philetus. They have left the truth. They have wandered away from the truth. Claiming that the resurrection of the dead has already occurred. In this way, they have turned some people away from the faith. And I, I had a friend that we were very close in the church. He has migrated. Uh, he used to refer to some people as pick up on corner philosophers. That was his word for them. Pick up on corner philosophers. He said, John, they will go on this corner, hear a little thing, and they buy it. Then they go to that corner and hear something else, and they buy it. And they make a whole doctrine of corner philosophy. And bring it in the church. Paul is warning Timothy that godless, vain, unprofitable discussions will ultimately result in the formulating and spreading of erroneous doctrine, which will then spread like a cancer or gangrene. False doctrine, like cancer, has the tendency to destroy not only the parts that are immediately affected, but it will extend to the surrounding parts and corrupt and destroy those parts too. Doctrines of the church are closely connected and dependent one upon another, just like the parts of the human body. If, 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 if you are in error in one part of the fundamental doctrine, all the others are going to be compromised. No man can safely hold a single error. No more than he can hold, just limit one part of his body that is affected with cancer. Very difficult. It is only a matter of time, if we continue like this, that doctrinal soundness is compromised. And I've seen it right here at Pentecostal Tabernacle. Men who were sound in the faith, solid, believe the doctrine to the very core of their being. And then they started to speculate as to whether Jesus was a black man or a white man. And started to speculate on other things. And this now became their mantra. It became more important to prove and these things. And then after a time, these persons who I used to watch being used of God, being such a blessing to me as a young convert in the church, just begin to fade away. Tell your neighbor, be careful of your company. Tell them, keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus. Paul named two men who were false teachers. And he identified their error. The men are Hymenaeus and Philetus. Both of them had been exposed to truth. 
and had at one time accepted it. In the process of time, however, they began to engage in godless, worldly, empty chatter. They became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and their doctrinal purity was compromised. Eventually, they wandered away from the truth, teaching that the resurrection had already taken place. And Paul says that this false doctrine by these false teachers who had once been sound had affected the churches to such an extent that the faith of some had been overthrown. Faith of some had been overthrown. You know, brethren, I, I went to, I went to a service once which honored no one of the uh, great leaders of the apostolic movement. And uh, he had suddenly become ill and uh, was not able to walk unassisted anymore and so on. And it had happened very rapidly. I remember being in that service and hearing another elderly minister come up, another elderly pastor, again a man who is widely known. And he said, when he got an opportunity to speak, he said, I am not surprised at what has happened to this gentleman. He said, my wonder is why it has not happened to more of us. He said, do you know what it is for a pastor to have invested in people, to have taught them and prayed for them and worked out problems and then to see them lose their way? He says, can any of you here imagine the toll that takes on the being of the person? He says, it is only God who upholds us, you know. And shortly thereafter, that man suffered a stroke. But, and, and, and so, <laughs> well, well, well. In verse 19, Paul says, nevertheless, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, Lord knoweth them that are here. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now that word nevertheless connects the mention of the falling away of some from the truth with the fact that the foundation of God standeth sure. Paul's thought is that the New Testament church has an integrity that is not affected by some who seem to belong to it, but who are false both in what they teach and in how they live. Firm foundation is the church of the living God. The mystical body of Christ. The organism existing in the divine knowledge of God. Paul, when he says the foundation of God standeth sure. He's not referring to the church as it is perceived by men. Various denominations and organizations that gather together on Saturday and Sunday for worship. No. Paul is assuring Timothy that though some have turned away from the faith 
as a result of the erroneous doctrine of corrupt teachers. Yet, the foundation of the church which God has laid remains firm. He's saying, don't worry, Timothy. God is still in control. In Ephesians 2, 19 to 22, Paul assured the saints at Ephesus, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. As long as this foundation remains firm, there was no reason to be troubled from the instances of apostasy which had occurred. There is no power that can stop God from preserving the true church. The called out from among the called out. The true ecclesia. He will preserve them to the very end. Hebrews 12, 25 to 29. The writer says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised saying, yet once more I shake, not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things Things that are shaken as of things that are made. The things that we make. Some things we made, God never made. And God is going to shake them. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Message renders the passage this way. So don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what will happen to us if we turn our backs on heavenly warnings? His voice that time shook the earth to its foundations. This time, he's told us this quite plainly. He'll also rock the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom. Stem to stern. The phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning. Getting rid of all the historical and religious junk. All the historical and religious junk. So that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship. 
deeply reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house. Parching all that needs to burn. And he won't quit until it's all cleansed. God himself is fire. God is speaking to us today through his word. And it's working. Are we listening? Out of the epistle to the Hebrews. is trying to get us to understand. That if God shook things at Mount Sinai. And those who refused to hear were judged. How much more responsible are we today. Who have experienced the blessings of the new covenant. God is shaking things brethren. God is shaking his church. Peter said in 1 Peter 4 and 17, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? God is shaking the church first. He wants to tear down the scaffolding. And reveal the unshakable realities that are eternal. Shaking down the exterior. And all the things that we have put up in his face. God is shaking them down. Whether you like it or not. And they're going to come down. Because there's a church behind all the stuffing. Behind all the nonsense that we put out front. There's a church that God is looking for. Behind all the public relations. There's a church. Behind all the advertisement. There's a holy church. Behind all the man-made structures, there's a church. Shaking. God will shake them out. And if we align ourselves to them, we're going to get shaken out too. God is sending tremor after tremor. He wants to shake out pretense. Shake out hypocrisy. Shake out pride. Shake out the doctrines of men. He's saying to the blood bath, wake up. Straighten up and fly right. Set your house in order. He's saying to the redeemed, beware. Lest you are building your life on things that can be shaken. Don't hold on to them. Because when I shake them, I'm going to shake you too. As events draw closer to the time, we're going to see more shaking, both in the church and in the world. If you know that you are a part of the bride, just buckle your seatbelt. Just buckle your seatbelt. Don't worry. Just buckle up. Lord, he that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. <laughs> Give me ten more minutes. Paul says to Timothy, the foundation of God is safe and secure because God's seal is on it. Seal is used for security. 
or as a mark of genuineness. In the Bible, a seal is a mark of ownership and security. The seal that Paul is talking about is affixed to the foundation and seems to refer to some inscription written on the foundation which always remained there and speaks to the character and design of the building. Brethren, the church is owned by Jesus Christ, not by man. And that is why the foundation of God standed sure. If it was a man that owned the church, we would have no hope. Men own denominations. Men own organizations. But God owns the church. Matthew tells us in chapter 16 of his gospel. That when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, And upon this rock, you are a stone. But upon the rock of what you have just uttered, I will build my church. My church. My church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We must ensure that we are in the church that is owned and builded by Jesus. It is possible for us to be members of a Christian, Christian denomination or organization and not be members of the church. Make sure that when you walk up here, and they shake your hand and give your right hand a fellowship that can't bribe God to put you in the church. Make sure you know God. Jesus did not promise that the gates of hell would not prevail against organization and denomination. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Denominations are being shaken. Organizations are being shaken. Everything that's not of Jesus shall go down. Are you in the church of the living God? Or are you merely in a denomination or an organization? Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Have you been baptized in the body? Are you still abiding?
Jesus is not coming back for a denomination. He's not coming back for an organization. Coming back for his church. His bride. And even if we down here don't know our bride. Jesus knows those who are in the church. Careful Jesus with a heart. Careful Jesus with running up and down the aisle. Careful Jesus with big testimony and nice song. Church of Christ. Is a building reared by the hands of God. Its foundation has been firmly and securely laid. On that foundation, there's an inscription always remaining, which determines the character of the building. The foundation has a seal that is permanently affixed to it. The seal has an inscription written on it. The inscription on the seal reads as follows. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We're not going to get to the great house today to know what kind of vessel we are. Maybe tonight. The inscription has two aspects to it. The first aspect refers to the election of God. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Lord knoweth them that are his. It is a fearful inscription. It indicates clearly that nobody can fool God. The Lord Jesus Christ is intimately acquainted with all who enter the building. He knows who belongs to him. He knows who does not. Said to the church, don't worry about that. Let them grow together. Harvest time is coming. Leave it to me. Be faithful. He knows who belongs to him and who does not. He can separate his own from all others. Lord have mercy. Those of you who are dreamers of dreams and seers of vision, visions, make sure that when God tells you about the faults of others, he can tell you about yourself too. A lot of the dreamers and prophets, I don't know why they can't fix themselves. You, they always can get a word for other people. His constant care will be extended to all who are truly his own to preserve them. Paul said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. They are marked by God so as to be recognized by him as his. This mark serves as a perpetual reminder to them that they are not their own. That they have an obligation to live a holy life. Lord knoweth them that are his. Lord knows. I don't know, but the Lord knows. 
poor don't know, but the Lord knows. Second aspect of the inscription, let everyone that name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. What is God saying to us? If you belong to me, stop the slackness. If you name my name, straighten up. Don't call my name a ramp with it. In other words, those who are the elect of God will prove it by the way they live their lives. Not that they won't make mistakes, but they have a heart for God. And if they go down, they're getting up back and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm still coming. I'm not staying here, Lord. I'm not staying in this mess. I'm moving. If you love mess and love to stay there, check yourself. Check yourself. Get into the church. Paul said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God and you are not your own? You are bought with a price. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. They belong to God. The message said, didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place? The place of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through your body. Paul said in Ephesians 1, he, 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 he speaks to both aspects of the written inscription and the seal. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 1 to 4, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. First part of the inscription that Lord knoweth them that are his. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The second part. Let him that name at the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let's stand. We have to close now. Are you in the church? Triumph. You have the goods. Still have oil in your lamp. Some of us have got distracted. Fighting for things. The only way you're going to make it. Is when you understand. That you have to give up everything. So that you can possess Jesus. Foundation of God standard sure. Some leaving, but don't worry. Lord knoweth them that are his. Lord knoweth them that are his. Foundation stand sure. You sure you're in the church, brethren? Touch your neighbor and ask them. You sure you're ready? Ask them the seal cover you. Oh God, lift your hands and worship God. The 
you feel something burning in your spirit sure you in the body ah sure you in the body sure you in the body sure the holy ghost still stirring in you sure the blood still cover you sure make sure you're in the church while you're fighting about denomination and organization make sure you're safe and the trumpet sound is the church going up When we go to heaven, folks, you're not going to say Baptist, Methodist, Anglican, Presbyterian, Catholic. No. You're not going to say Bethel, Emmanuel, UPC, PAFW. Just the church. I have a fear. That many are in the organization that not in the church. Fighting for the wrong thing. Lord God. Anybody here need the altar? Come. Come. If, if you need the altar, come. We don't care for what anybody wants to say. You come. Make sure somebody say, I cut it this way, hallelujah, and still I possess it today. That's the important thing, not just that I got it one day. Still in the church. Anybody here not in the church, you want to come? Make sure not filled with the Holy Ghost, not baptized in Jesus' name, never spoke in tongues when the Holy Ghost came. Jesus, 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 help us today, 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 find yourself in the body of Christ, be more concerned about being in the church than anything else. to get into Rotary and Kiwanis and not be in the church don't join the fraternity if you're not in the church make sure about the church PTA and all the other associations that you are president for make sure you have a seat in Zion Jesus, 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 I don't want to miss it, don't want to miss it, I don't want to miss the move of God, not just the rapture, don't want to miss the move of God, I don't want to die for starvation spiritual starvation in a land of plenty i want what god has for me must get it i must get it come on brethren shake yourself shake yourself summon up the holy ghost if you have it Sing a song for me, somebody. Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized in the body 
and forevermore abide Lord Jesus do you know him when last have you seen his face have you had an encounter with him lately when last has something burned in your belly more than just coming to church coming to church coming to church coming to church Are you coming to church not going to see if you are Lord triumphant are you That's where Have it you been baptized in the body and forevermore abide? Are you in the church trial?
baptized in the body and forevermore abide. Lord, take me back to that old landmark. Commitment and begin a fresh start. Help me find my direction, place a burden in my heart. Oh Lord, take me back to that old. And begin a fresh start Help me find my direction Place a burden in my heart Oh Lord, take me back to that old And through the valley low But somehow it seems I've lost my way Through the cares of it all When I remember a place Where you spoke my name And I heeded to your call burden in my heart oh Lord take me back to that old landmark I don't know how far I've drifted or how long it may have been there's a hunger deep inside me to feel your spirit once again. And whatever the sacrifice, my first love to restore, you see my soul cries out just to be renewed. Like never before, Lord, take me back to that old landmark where I'll make a new commitment and begin a fresh start. Help me find my direction, place a burden in my heart. Oh, Lord, take me back to that old landmark. Lord, 
hands and worship the Lord. Amen. There are several people at the altar. Amen. Reaching out. Amen. If you if you don't have to go, amen. We are inviting you just to draw a little closer. Amen. If you are not praying in your seat, but if you can draw a little closer and just give support to what is happening here. Amen. Several of our young men are here. Amen. Reaching out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will never be the same again. I can never return. I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I'll run the race. And I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. I can never return. I'll close the door. I will walk the path and I'll run the the same again I will never be the same again I can never return I've closed the door I will walk the path I'll run the Oh 
again I'll never oh, be the same again oh, and I will never be the same again I can't go back I won't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me Lord, i can't go back i won't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Lord Jesus, I can't go back, I won't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I'm never going back I'm never going back To the way things was Oh, I'm going back No, I'm never going back I'm never going back To the way things was I'm never going back I'm never going back I'm never going back to the way things were I'm never going back I'm never going back I'm never going back to the way things were I can't go back oh, I can't go back To the way it used to be Before your presence came and changed me Oh yeah I won't go back I can't go back To the way things used to be before your presence oh, came before your and presence came and changed. Oh, never, never the same again. Now oh, I know I, I won't be the same again. From the moment I met Jesus, new life for me began and I won't be the same again oh never the same again no no I won't be the same again from the moment Jesus, new life for me began, and I won't be the same again. Never the same, never the same again. Now I know I won't be the same again. From the moment I met Jesus, new 
new life for me began and i won't be the same